Okay, uh, so uh, my talk is about another uh, way to cause a denial of service attack in GSM, especially um, in GSM devices. And um, I've already been introduced, but I really like to use just my short little nickname, which is Domi, so call me like that. And um, without that, let's jump to the agenda of today. So I would like to just review shortly the history of denial of service attacks we have seen on GSM and then um, go into a little bit of theory about location updates. And then in the end, we're going to see the attack in live too and talk about what's the theory behind it. So these are the three main GSM uh, denial of service attacks I, I um, gathered together. Uh, the first one is called Rachel, and this has been um, discovered by Dieter Spar in uh, 2009. And the idea is that uh, uh, R-A-C-H stands for um, uh, Random Access Channel. And um, the idea is that the base station has a limited uh, number of uh, these channels. And uh, when you uh, request such a channel, this the, me the message that, that says, I would like to request a random access channel is unauthenticated. So what Dieter Spar did was just flooding the BTS, the base station, with random access channel requests. And then uh, um, in quite short time, the BTS ran out of uh, random access channels. And then uh, the legitimate users were not able to, to do anything on that cell because for the mobile uh, equipment, for the mobile station to do anything, a random access channel is needed because that's where he or he can ask for for any kind of service. So that's how that attack works. And then we get to the IMSI detach attack, which is a quite sophisticated one by Sylvain Munaud uh, from 2010. And um, this one is uh, this one is really similar to the uh, the deauthentication attack we see on wireless networks. So what happens is here that uh, the signaling messages are not authenticated in GSM. And uh, when you turn off your phone, it sends a, a, a message called IMSI detach, which uh, signals to the base, uh, to the core network, actually in the HLR, which is, which is the main register containing all the information about subscribers, the main database. Uh, there is actually a flag which says, okay, now this phone is turned off. So, there is no unnecessary paging and no unnecessary searching for a phone when somebody tries to call it when it's turned off. So the main idea is just to like save uh, save bandwidth or save resources. And what you can do is just use the IMSI of the of the target phone and send IMSI detach messages uh, periodically or like like quite regularly. And then that will make it uh, look like that the phone has been turned off. So the network will not even look for the phone. It will just assume that it's turned off and it's unreachable. Even when it's in your pocket and it should be working, but it's not. Um, so that's how that one worked. And the last one uh, is the paging race condition, which has been done by Nico Golda. And the idea is that... Um, uh, when there is any any event coming from the GSM network side to the mobile station, there is the so-called paging, which means that the network is going to page, which is kind of pinging or like asking, are you there? Uh, messages being sent out uh, on the specific location area where the phone was known to be. And the idea is to answer faster than the phone. And then if you answer to the paging, then the uh, network is going to assume, okay, you are the one. So let's, let's uh, continue this discussion on an authenticated channel. And then you're going to just send a reset or something like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So then the call or the text message is going to get lost. Of course, if you are able to have the uh, session key for the specific user, you can actually answer the call. That's why he's talk was called let me answer that for you because it's possible to actually win the racing condition and have all the info all the stuff coming to you and you already have the session key so you can decrypt and answer so that's that was uh the history of denial of services so what is a location update uh the location update is used to used um in the in GSM to know in which location area the phone uh, uh, is right now. Um, so how it works, it's just uh, simply uh, the phone will say 
to then say to the network, okay, I'm attached to this location area, I'm right here. So just register in the HLR that when you would like to look for me, I'm in that location area. A location area contains um, more uh, base stations, and uh, but but it's still like a smaller area. So when there is a paging going on for a specific phone, uh, it's be being paged in the location area. So when when is there a location update? Uh, when the phone is switched on, of course, because when it first comes to the network, it attaches to one of the base stations and then sends a location update saying I'm here, or when a phone goes to the different location area, so there is a handover between areas, and then uh, of course the phone needs to tell the core network that right, yes, I moved to a different location area. And uh, there is also a way uh, to command the phones to do regular location updates, which means that uh, every single like 10 minutes or something like that, it needs to send a location update request to the network saying that I'm, uh, I'm located in this and this location area. Um, and of course, the network can actually reject these uh, these location update requests, and for many different reasons. I, I compiled a little um, summary of what kind of reasons we have. Uh, there is cause number thirteen, which means roaming is not allowed in this location area, and um, we're gonna see how the phone actually reacts to this. But let's go through all these. Uh, we have IMSI unknown in HLR which is uh, kind of like something is really going bad going on with your SIM card because we don't know the SIM card you are trying to uh, to register. Um, there is illegal uh, mobile station, which also indicates some, some problem with the SIM card, and also the illegal ME or mobile equipment, which means that the phone you are trying to use is actually blacklisted because of being stolen or having something wrong with it. So you, you cannot do a location update. And uh, let's see what the phone reacts how the phone reacts to these uh, messages well if the reject value is uh, 11 12 13 or 15 the mobile station sets itself to roaming not allowed which actually means that you are you don't have uh, coverage on your phone at all uh, you can only do uh, like emergency calls but that's it um, and this state will uh, stay until uh, you go to a different location area because as may, you might have seen that these causes which I mentioned in the first part these are based on a location area so when you move to a different location area the phone will just uh, just uh, start operating again but in that specific location area the phone will not receive coverage and not do anything until the phone is either rebooted or put in airplane mode and and turned back on um, so it's actually what it does, it, the phone remembers the location area code and, and knows that in this location area code I'm not allowed to operate. So when I, when I see that this loca I'm in this location area, I will just not do anything. Um, the second one is um, if the reject value is number 2, 3 or 6, so it means that something is wrong with the SIM card or your mobile equipment is a stolen one, uh, the mobile station sets the update state to roaming not allowed, which means you're not, ha you're not getting any coverage, and considers the SIM as invalid until it is switched off or the SIM is removed. So this means that once the phone received uh, codes number two, three, or six uh, location update reject, the phone will just simply not, not have coverage for for uh, the time when it, before. Well, you need to remove the SIM card or you need to reboot the phone to get coverage. So and other reject values are considered as abnormal cases. So, how do we mount this attack? So we already see that if we are able to send a, send a location update uh, reject to the phone, then the phone will not receive coverage. But uh, how do we do that? Well, first we need to have a fake base station to do that. And uh, an Osmocom BB phone, of course, is always here to help us. Uh, you might know these phones, these are like 10 year old phones, but right now they are not that much available in the market, but they used to be 10 euros. Well, it's been, it's been some years, um, but it's still a cheap way and you can still find them, find them at some places, even on eBay. And, um, these can be, uh, these can be used as cheap base stations. So they, they act like a base station. Um, and, uh, as you can see, once the phone attached to our fake base station, we can, do two main things with it. Make phones disable themselves in specific areas 
or disable the phones around us until they are rebooted. Uh, or maybe even disable them permanently. Uh, that's cause number six, which is a stolen mobile equipment. I haven't tried this uh, uh, cause on my network because I heard this um, in a talk from 2010 from Carson Noll and Chris Petchett that they actually had a phone which disabled itself permanently when receiving that code. So the phone thought that, okay, I'm a stolen phone right now. Okay, I'm not going to operate. And they rebooted it. And no, I'm not going to do anything. It's a stolen phone. It's blacklisted. You cannot do anything with that. So I'm not really want to try this out because I, I like to use my phone also for normal purposes, not for, just for fun. So that's also a possibility. Um, and the first one is, is, is kind of a funny one too, because uh, let's say you go to a location and, and you see the location area code there. So you can actually go somewhere else and tell people's phone that when they go to that location area, which location area code you know, then, then they won't have coverage at all because the phone will just remember the location area code. And then, uh, when it gets there, it will just simply stop operating. So this is also a funny thing or, well, not funny, but it's it's actually a sad thing to say that uh, you can make people's phone disable themselves somewhere in the world. It's uh, from remotely pretty much, and you need to access the phone for well, like just some meters to have the phone attached to your base station for some seconds, and then until the phone is rebooted, this uh, list of banned or disabled uh, location area codes will be will be stored and used whenever it's needed. So, exactly. That's also that's also a way to use this. So the one question that uh, still remains is how you get phones to actually attach to your base station, and uh, and um, well, um, okay, I'm just gonna go through this really fast because I already talked about it. But uh, but uh, we can uh, set the location area code of our BTS naturally because we control the BTS, so we can say whatever the location area code we would like to use. Uh, and we're gonna do do it the way that the our location area code is different from the ones that's around us. So the phone, when the phone connects here, it will need to do a location update since it changed location areas because ours is different from the original commercial networks. And then, uh, so the phone will do a location area update. But how do we get the phone to actually hand over to our base station? Well, uh, handover is um, usually based on signal strength and signal quality, so RSSI. But um, there is one more thing in GSM, which is, um, I'm not 100% sure why it's been introduced, but it's really the silver bullet for IMSI catchers, because these uh, the C1 and the C2 values, especially the C2 values, value, which is responsible for the cell reselection process, it's actually, these values are broadcasted by the network, and they are, they directly influence the way the phone decides which cell to connect to. Which means that if I set this value really high, I can make my cell look like the best cell around the place. And, uh, okay, I'm sorry, just Steph got a knife and I was kind of worried that he wants to do something with me. So if you set the values really high, you will look like you are the best tower around this place and it's not really, and it doesn't really matter how bad your signal is. So let's, I would say an extreme example. Like I set the C1 value for like 126, which is the maximum. And uh, I had a commercial tower broadcasting almost like next to me. And it had an RSSI of t minus 20. And my tower had like minus 60. And the phones kept handovering to my tower since still because the C2 value was so high. So. As I already said, like we, we, I did some experiments with that. Like, okay, let's set the C value to the maximum, which is 126, and and see what happens. And my iPhone actually did handover immediately, but other phones like this uh, older BlackBerry I'm using for uh, network monitoring and engineering testing, it didn't do it. So I actually looked at it, and what did I see? I saw that the C2 value was around minus 100 or minus 126. So yes, BlackBerry uses a short integer to store this value. So I just created a short integer overflow in the software. And the iPhone uses 32-bit long integer. So that's why the iPhone was able to handle it because it was able to, it was capable of handling uh, the value. But on the BlackBerry, it just did an overflow. So it looked like the worst tower, actually. So I had to reduce the value. 
and then I get around 40 and 50, which is which is quite great. And well, as you see, we actually just built an Imzy catcher as as a side effect, I would say, of this. So I would like to do the demo now, and I really hope it's gonna work out. And uh, if your phones are on 2G or GSM, your phones will be affected. Uh, it depends on. I'm gonna I'm gonna you I'm gonna fake one of the Hungarian uh, operators here to. <laughs> Yeah, that's, this is also a good thing because we don't have reception here. Uh, I will switch to the, the Hungarian operator which does not have coverage here after the, the first demo. So we're going to do this like in an interactive live way. And uh, okay, so let's. So let's uh, just have a look in the OpenVSC config so you see what we're talking about. This one is the first one. This is the location updating reject cause, which I set to number two. As we discussed, this means uh, that the SIM card is invalid. <coughs> also, I don't have encryption, of course, because why would I? Uh, I'm using the network country code and the mobile network code of uh, the Hungarian operator Telnor. So that just, this is just to uh, fake the fake the tower. And um, what we have a value hidden here, which is the cell reselection offset, which is set to 40. This is the C2 value I talked about, so 40 or 50 around that, that is, that is the good one. Uh, funny story, story about this, I was just like really being happy about this stuff and, and I was at the Osmo for me be, uh, uh, IRC channel and I was just like saying, hey guys, I just created the base station and I'm feeling awesome and I set this value to 40 and all the phones just hand over to me. And then Sylvan actually answered to me saying, well, why do you think I implemented this feature in the first place? <laughs> yeah, okay. I just felt like, oh, all right, that's, that's, how, that's how they roll in there. Okay. Um, and I also, uh, one more thing I would like to show here is the ARFCN, so the frequency is uh, set to one of the neighbor towers of my current tower um, because I, we, I actually figured it out that the phone only monitors cells that, have, that are being uh, advertised by, by the current serving cell as neighbor cells so I need to use one of the neighbor cells ARFC and to, to get noticed by the phone even, even better. So, okay, let's start up uh, open BSC and then Starting up the phone with the TRX uh, firmware and it's loading up as usual. Works quite well, fortunately. Okay, so the phone is up and running. So now I need to sync to a commercial tower to, to have my phone's uh, clock sync. And it says sync acquired, so now I'm in BTS mode. And let's start this. BTS right now. So it's a closed network, which means that anyone who tries to associate with it will get the location of the reject with the reject codes I specified earlier. So I already see here that my phone sees this tower as uh, one of the best. And okay. my phone is dead. <laughs> <laughs> there is a phone there. This one is still running, but uh, it should should actually, leave. I already have some. Okay, this one is having really poor coverage, but it also seems that it's going to lose signal soon. So this is now one of the Hungarian operators. Uh, okay, this one lost signal already. Oh yeah, nice. The BlackBerry shows minus 127 again, so the overflow came. But I will try to move it a little bit because when the RSSI, okay, now now it's better. It's now 119. <coughs> So, uh, okay, just hand over and you can already see the location updating uh, reject coming in. Here is my IMSI if you would like to have it. And my location updating <coughs> happened here with the, yeah, it doesn't say the, the cause for it, but uh, okay, this one doesn't have coverage at all. Uh, okay, I'm pretty sure that we killed all the phones that are for Telenor Hungary, so I think we would switch over to uh, T-Mobile now, because <laughs> this, is, this is the next one we have. Um, I'm not sure what frequency to use for it, but uh, I really hope that the... 
Well, uh, if you were roaming on Telenor network, you should have been hand over to this tower. But uh, okay. you were not going to not going to see it differently because it's it's a, it acts like the same uh, like the original network. So yeah, but I didn't. I, I think I was uh, not at Telenor roaming, uh, uh -huh. but I didn't see it in the list at all. I would have suspected that if you were on your base station here, that I was able to. Well, it See depends. It and, um, some phones, it. some phones have a list of operators they they know they are prefer they, they prefer, and sometimes they just not show up the other one. So you cannot mm -hmm. even select like the wrong one, especially when you're roaming. Like, like if you have a T-Mobile phone from Germany, you will be most certainly only be connected to T-Mobile Android and not to Telephone. So I will start off with uh, changing the mobile network code to 30, which is the one for T-Mobile. I'm not going to change the frequency right now because as I know there is no T-Mobile coverage here down there so the phones may or may not find this uh, this tower but we'll see. Uh, okay, so the config has been saved and let's start this up again. And now I'm creating a T-Mobile Hungary base station or tower. And I suppose it will be, oh, wait, no, this is not the one. It all depends on the frequency, you know, because uh, the phone, the phone's, oh, okay, here is one, actually. Here is one, and this is a reject, so some, someone's phone can just kill now, probably. Okay, this one is, actually I see the user cell. Okay, okay, phones are finding it, I see. I'm not collecting any IMSIs before you would ask. Uh, I will delete all this, all the logs. And I, I don't care about the IMSI at all. Here is a Hungarian one you can see because the first uh, five characters show the network code and the country code. If we go a little bit up, there is there are German ones for sure. Let's see that. Okay, I went way up there, but. Okay, so, okay, how many people have reception now? Not anymore. Okay, so <laughs> pretty much nobody showed up. Okay. Well, um, yes, and uh, of course, if uh, I were to do uh, the other attack I mentioned, which was, uh, which was, which is based on location areas, the only thing I would do is just go into the OpenBSC uh, company, mm -hmm. and then, uh, what I would do is um, change the reject cost to, let's say, number 13 or something like that. And, uh, and then here at the BTS level, I can change the location area code. So I would change that location area code to the one area I would like the target to not have reception. And then just leave this anywhere. As you see, it's just a little simple setup. It could even be hooked up to, to a beagle bone or something like a stronger ARM. Uh, Board, I think even it has been uh, presented at, at the last CCC saying that GSM network in your pocket or something like that. Maybe Charlie Andreas Eversberg was do doing some stuff on it, and then you can just leave this anywhere or just have it in your backpack, and and people who walk by will just lose the reception, or or people will not have uh, cell phone coverage at certain areas. Um, my bigger plan is to create the device, actually it's just a Python script which makes the device iterate through all the Hungarian operators and then just stay there for one minute and then kill everyone's, uh, kill everyone's connection and then move to the next, next, uh, next operator. This is what I'm going to probably present at Hacktivity, so this is, this is uh, the improvement I'm planning on doing. So, we saw the demo. <coughs> what are the countermeasures? Well, of course, there are none. <laughs> I mean, in, when we talk about GSM and protocol errors, there is always uh, to do any countermeasures when you use uh, when you use GSM. If you go to 3G or 4G or whatever G, the of we, as far as we know, those are secure right now. 
but uh, jamming is always a possibility and there are even also uh, problems with 3G. Uh, I heard that there is a message that says on 3G, go back to 2G and that message is not authenticated. So if you create a beacon which keeps sending this message, all the phones will drop back to 2G or just buy a jammer from whatever Chinese store. And if you can get it over the border, then you will have, well, you will have your jammer and then you can do whatever you want, dropping back people. And I have some ideas uh, because you can say that, okay, I have a phone, it supports 3G. I'm really just trying to use 3G all the time, so I'm pretty safe. Or I have a phone and even if you kill me in one location area, I can just move to the next location area or just reboot the phone. But uh, I would like to point out that some other systems use GSM too, like house alarm systems, smart meters, traffic lights. I actually saw traffic lights using GPRS for communication. Um, and the question is how often are those rebooted or how often do you move them to a different location area and um, i really think that gsm is like a fallback especially for house alarm systems so i would just cut the wires and then kill the gsm part and then see what happens probably they will not figure out not do anything because they cannot do anything uh, smart meters traffic lights, uh, and so on who knows how would they react to how would they react to just losing all the all the coverage? Because I I don't think that uh, this is being implemented in them at all. Maybe we don't know that. Uh, so my conclusion is uh, GSM will probably survive 3G, maybe even 4G, because it is used in so many embedded little devices, and it will always be a fallback. And I'm I don't think that in the coming years. There's gonna be cheap 3G modems that gonna re be, uh, be used to replace GSM modems in, in like embedded systems as uh, house alarm systems and stuff like that. So I talked to many people who are really working close to network, network indus industries and network companies and they all also said that, that probably GSM will be with us for a lot longer than we thought it should be. So uh, I would still say it's a good area to do research on, especially now we have great tools. Uh, and um, let's even mention those tools, uh, the Osmacom project as a whole. But of course, if you broke it up, uh, Osmacom BB, OpenBSC, Osmo BTS, Osmo TRX, uh, Airprobe, and all that other stuff we have uh, up and running, open source free, great, great stuff created by those great people. I couldn't uh, list all the names, but of course they are there. So I would encourage anyone who has a little bit of interest and, uh, to, to do that and, and explore this area because I still think there is, there is some stuff to be explored and GSM will stay with us. Hopefully not forever. So I'm open to questions now. Uh, I will upload them. I will, I will, that's a good question. I have no idea. I will put them up on my blog and then tweet about it and put it on the website too. The video is going to be up uh, sometime when DNet has time to work on it. So, so what's the of the blog? Uh, it's a long one. Yeah, I, I will put it up there for sure. Yeah. Okay, if there are no other questions, then I will thank you for your attention.